Clarkson? Yes. Mr. Cry? Here. Mr. Polakoski? Here. Mrs. Rhodes? Mrs. Smith? Here. Mrs. Love? Here. Kaylee Whitlash? Here. Dylan Opelinski? Let it be note, noted that uh, Mr. Benz and Mrs. Rhodes contacted me and said they would not be present tonight. Citizens' comments? Uh, I have none. Minutes? Approval, is, minutes. approval of minutes? It is recommended that the board approve the minutes of September 13, 2018 discussion meeting and the September 20th, 2018 voting meeting. Motion? Butch, second? Second. Mrs. Smith? Roll call, please. Oh, voice vote, sorry. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Accounts, fund accounting check summary. It is recommended that the board approve the September 2018 fund accounting check summary. Motion. I make the motion. Mr. Polakowski, second. Second. Mrs. Smith, all in favor? Roll call. No, no. Roll call. Oh, sorry, roll call. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Fry? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Motion carried. Seven with two absent. 2018 Treasurer's Report. The board will be asked to consider the approval of the August 2018 and September 2018 Treasurer's Report. Motion. I'll make the motion. Mr. Polakowski, second. Second. Mr. Beistel. Roll call. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Fry? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Motion carries seven to absent. 2018 General Fund Expenditures and Revenues Report. It is recommended the board approve the September 2018 General Fund Expenditures and Revenues Report. Motion, please. Mrs. Smith, second. Second. Mr. Polakowski. Roll call, please. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Fry? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Motion carries seven, two absent. Budget preparation, early phase planning 2019 2020 fund budget. Please bear with me, it's a little long. Whereas Southmoreland School Board desires to continue to gather information for early budget development, including reasons not to preclude considerations of an Act I preliminary budget this early in the year. Be it resolved that, number one, at this time the business manager not be expected to do the calculations for grandfather debt until further action of the board because of the time required and possible need to involve previous board counsel for assistance. Number two, the business manager will continue working on developing the facts and information for the following. A, total payroll increases, including step increases and percentage increases for teaching staff and the rest of the personnel. B, possible special education increases, especially related to outside providers. C, early estimates of health care insurance increases. D, calculation of transportation increases. Number three, a report on whether the ending unreserved undesignated general fund balance for 2019-2020 on June 30th, 2020 would be likely to be equal or exceed 8% of the total budgeted expenditures and state what the assumptions are as to A, no increase in state funding beyond the current 2018-2019 year. All to be done for the December 6, 2018 reorganization meeting. In number four, 
Upon receipt of the above information, school board will vote on whether or not to continue working towards a January Act 1 proposed preliminary budget and give directions to the administration and the solicitor, therefore. Discussion? Yeah, uh, Mr. Matcher, with the, with the very beginning there, I was a little confused by what you said there. And what does that mean? Your first couple of lines about referring, referencing back to the other boards? Uh, okay, that is for the uh, grandfather debt. We just wanted to make sure that we we had all the all the pertinent information correct. So we were going to see see and see if there is any uh, other information that we needed to gather. Uh, Mr. Morneau has the calculations for two of them, which the first one in the resolution assumes that he would present tonight. We sort of got a little bit ahead. I wanted him to of the grandfather the, debt, you know, the no, the, the grand special education and uh, pieces. What would be listed under grandfather debt? Grandfather debt is the debt that has been issued in the past and then refinanced uh, several times. That's considered grandfather debt. Yes. It's not new debt. It's debt that's been outstanding and we're paying on it. The, the, the other two, uh, the resolution presumes that Mr. Marnell would give his report tonight on what he preliminarily found out about special education uh, exception and the uh, PEASERS increase exception. Can you? Sure. I, Is that all right? Sure. I, I guess that should have been attached to more dogs. Uh, but I did do the unofficial worksheet calculations uh, for special education expenditures. And um, long story short, we possibly uh, could uh, qualify for an additional uh, tax increase over the Act 1 index, which for this uh, upcoming year, 1920, our Act 1 index is 3.1%. Um, if you do an Act 1 budget and you submit it uh, to the Department of Education, they review it, uh, presume they, they approve it, then they open up what's called the referendum exception system. So that, that sends you down uh, what we refer to as the Act 1 timeline or highway as opposed to opting out of a tax increase greater than the Act 1 index and going down what we always refer to as the traditional budgeting timelines or, or the traditional budgeting highway. Uh, so the unofficial calculation for the special education expenditure uh, could allow us uh, possibly an additional $141,215 in additional possible property tax revenues over and above what the Act 1 3.1% index would generate. And I also worked through the calculation for uh, retirement. The unofficial calculation for retirement could yield us a possible, again it's unofficial, an additional $31,476 in additional property tax increase. So you have the 141, the 131, about 172 additional uh, uh, dollars in property taxes uh, that would be allowable uh, under Act One. And if we and if we're going down the Act One timeline, and the window's open, we'll, I will input obviously the most current data to recalculate those, and then. Um, if I'm allowed, I, I would uh, reach out to our bond counsel, Mr. Pastel, and our underwriters, Piper Jaffrey, for their assistance on the uh, complicated worksheet for grandfather debt and see what, what that would generate us. Those are the only three exceptions that are left uh, for districts to use. So that's the long and short of, of, of this part of, of this uh, motion. So we have a potential for retirement, uh, special education. Uh, and I see retirement wasn't listed on this sheet, but I went ahead and, and worked it out. Uh, was, that, yeah, was that yesterday or the day before? So uh, Mr. Masha and Mr. Batonic would have that information. What's retirement? Well, it's, it's the retirement uh, expenditures uh, that we have on our employees. Uh, you, Peters? PEASERS, we call it. Oh, Pennsylvania okay. School Employees okay. Retirement System. Okay. I misunderstood. Okay. 
It's okay. It is. It is complicated. <laughs> Mr. Don't make it easy. Mr. Batonic and Mr. Uh, Marnell and I have been looking at all the preliminary information and trying to get as much information to you as possible, as early as possible, to help make informed decisions moving forward. Have we come up with any, Mr. Marnell, have we come up with any revenue generating ideas or any deficit cutting ideas? Well, that's going to be part of our process as we work through the details of the budget. Any, any any ideas that come to uh, to the, the table as far as revenue generators or uh, expenditure reductions will certainly uh, discuss it and then bring it to the table for your consideration. Nothing on the burners right now. Nothing on the burners right now, Mr. Ron. I, I will say that uh, administratively, with, working with my administrative team, we are looking at uh, uh, access billing. See how that would influence generate any any funding and uh, a little bit of a restructuring of our uh, of our special ed uh, specifically our life skills programming to see if bringing some students back into our, our brick and mortar our, our property wouldn't uh, result in, in uh, savings also so we're look we're looking at a number of avenues to try to see how we can generate or save some money have we contacted any other financially strapped uh school districts to see what they're doing or thinking about doing? I, I have been, uh, at my superintendent meetings, I have been in conversations with some of the other superintendents to try to see what they're what they're doing, so I, I am reaching out. The, the special education uh, calculation is a really strange one um, because it requires you to go backwards in time uh, three fiscal years in two fiscal years and compare the change between those two and then use the index for the upcoming budget year for which you will be seeking the exception and doing your budget um, as a subtraction from those from netting out those numbers um, and so it's not even looking at what your expenses are for the upcoming budget year you do that as part of your planning, but to get the exception, they make you go backwards in time to do the calculation. And we, we sat around and talked about that, like, well, why is this? And the only thing we can come up with is it's because of the way uh, the reports go in to the Department of Education as to when they get their data that they're, they're always behind because you don't do your annual financial statement until October or if you get an extension until the end of November. And here, you're already planning. So it appears that that's why they go backwards in time to do that calculation. It, yes, that's correct. They, they, want, they want real information. So that it's an actual number that actually occurred. And you, get, you either claim it or you lose it. So. That's the way it is. Yeah, they, and this is not to say, by the way, that you should do a preliminary budget. It's merely that, it, you know, we want guidance like, okay, still develop the information so that in December you have even more information and then either say, yeah, keep working on it or don't. But rather than just guessing, I think this is the first time that this calculation was ever actually formally done and presented because it was never presented before, I know that. And I always had in the back of my mind, like, gee, there ought to be a hundred thousand bucks there somewhere, and there is. There's actually more for those two years. Yeah, the two years that they uh, will look at for generating this possible additional uh, dollars in, in tax revenues is the actual amounts reported for the 16-17 fiscal year and the 17-18 fiscal year. Now, 17-18 uh, will be uh, uploaded. 2PD by, by all uh, school systems uh, when they complete uh, this report. Yeah, this well, last year it was 117 pages. It's called the Annual Financial Report. The form number is PDE 2056. And that's what makes doing an Act 1 budget this early very problematic uh, because concurrently with doing a budget, uh, this, this has always been the 
the prime job that a business manager would work on uh, in the fall months. Plus working with your, your auditor, auditing the books and formulating the final numbers, uh, you have to complete this report. It's a very detailed report, so and a very time-consuming uh, report. So it, that's that's what will make it very uh, very difficult doing them both simultaneously. So uh, we'll we'll give it the uh, the due diligence. We'll work hard to to make that happen. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I believe so for South Warren. I think it's probably the first time you've ever had this calculation, at least officially presented. Maybe uh, internally it might have been prepared but yeah you they they will not let you look at what you budgeted for the current year nor what you plan on budgeting for special education for the 1920 year so yeah this is really behind but it is what it is it's what was passed into law so any more discussion Second. Second. Mrs. Smith. Roll call. Mr. Fry. Yes. Mr. Palakowski. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Mr. Alt. Yes. Mr. Bystow. Yes. Mr. Carson. Yes. Mrs. Love. Yes. Motion carries. Seven with two absent. Uh, Egrip. You once again, please bear with me. Whereas it has been recommended that the school board engage in earlier decision making regarding whether to develop or not to develop an early retirement incentive for a plan, here as known as ERIP, be it resolved that, number one, the board authorizes the superintendent to have preliminary meetings with South Moreland Education Association concerning the possibility or not of an ERIP without authority to offer or agree to any specific terms and to report back as to the preliminary results at the November planning session. Number two, the superintendent shall report his factual analysis of the labor pool no later than the November 2018 planning session. Number three, the board will obtain development of factual budget related information relevant to its consideration of the above no later than December 6, 2018. And the board will decide in December whether or not to continue with the ERIP process for the potential formal vote by January 10, 2019. Discussion? Hearing none, do we have a motion? Mr. Carson, second. Second. Mr. Polakowski, roll call, please. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Alt? No. Mr. Beistel? No. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Fry? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Motion carries 5 2 and 2 absent. 5 2? I thought it was 4 3. No? Mr. Alt vote no, Mr. Bice will vote no, everybody else is yes. Well, Heather's was no. No, she was a yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I didn't hear it. Board reports, student report. Uh, let it be known that Dylan Oplinski is at a marching band rehearsal. There is a competition this Saturday at uh, Deer Lakes High School. And then uh, their championships is on the 27th, and that is at Bristol Hills Club. Congratulations to September Scotty Scholar, Megan King. Congratulations also to September Spirit of South Moreland student, Olivia Price. Picture Day retakes will be on October 26th. The following students volunteered on Sunday, September 30th at Walmart and Mount Pleasant to collect food for the Westmoreland County Food Bank. Scarlett Davidovich, Larissa Lombardo, Jocelyn Basato, and Brianna Howells. Updates from Bots IQ. The 2018-2019 competition season is underway, and students are already designing and reevaluating this year's robots to hopefully improve upon last year's great results. Currently, each team is developing a refined prototype that will be accurately cut out on the CNC mill at the high school. 
This will give students an actual model to work with while the financial parts are being water jet and precision milled by our industry sponsors. On Friday, September 28th, two students accompanied Mr. Sherrick and Mr. Pollard to the annual professional development training day at CCAC West Hills. Various presenters from veteran schools and industries gave presentations on robot and weapon design, safety and inspection, electronics, fundraising, and portfolio development. A lot of great information and advice to help improve our teams at Southmoreland. We also received a $250 donation from the Pittsburgh chapter of the National Tooling and Machining Foundation, and our, <coughs> our donation was made possible by the generosity of Chevron. We thank Chevron and all the sponsors that help make this program a success each year for over 65 high schools in the southwestern Pennsylvania region. Thank you. Super Superintendent report? Yeah, I only have one addition to the report that I gave uh, last week. I want to thank uh, Mr. Marnell and uh, Mr. Miswell. Uh, we were notified this week that uh, South Warren School District was the recipient, recipient of a $15,000 grant from the Woman of Healthy Environment for uh, water testing in our building. So I wanted to thank them for, for their hard work. Thank you. Business manager report summary of current budget status. What I went over, did that Qualified that, okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure either. <laughs> but I, I could talk about the current budget if you want, but I don't want to belabor your meeting with more. Does anyone have any questions, Mr. Marnell, about the current budget standing? I think you're good. I have no report for the WIU, CWCTC. Solicitor's report. Oh, did I? Oh, solicitor's report, sorry. I um, in, in addition to what I reported on last week, I uh, am obligated to publicly state that um, I've given the school board a, a legal opinion uh, that the school board does not have the statutory and legal authority to reopen the budget to remove an item of revenue uh, for the $25,000 for the um, uh, funds to be generated by the uh, pay to uh, have uh, casual uh, Fridays uh, and that um, the specific sections of the school code uh, dealing with that are in my memorandum and the none of the exceptions apply and so I am strongly recommending that the board rescind that resolution um, so as to be in compliance with the school code um, and uh, not to have the issue um, of a uh, negative finding uh, by the uh, auditor, which would be forthcoming. That's it. Thank you. I have no WIU report. CWCTC report? Yes, I just have a few things. Um, the Transition for Life and Careers program that um, I talked to you about um, a few months ago, um, sort of a special ed program, um, it's set to start in January. And that program is headed up by um, Mark Long and um, recently hired Steve Saunders from the IU. Um, the school is in contract negotiations with the teachers. Talks are now going well. Um, I'll keep everyone updated um, when we reach an agreement. And um, this board will have to vote on their contract also. It has to be approved by the nine sending districts before uh, uh, it can be used, I guess, is the term. Uh, the JOC last night approved to send three Skills USA advisors and 32 students to the Western Region Fall Leadership Conference at Seven Springs. That's October 31st to November 2nd. And um, Jack and I had talked about this um, before he retired. But, um, Professional Advisory Committee has formed a subcommittee um, along with another group of uh, Vince's on the subcommittee for um, studying the programs that are out there. They want to um, get rid of some of the low enro enrollment programs and maybe start some new ones. Um, I know that's been on the, the PAC's you know, agenda for a while. They want to get, get rid of some of those programs that are stagnant. Um, so. I don't know if Vince, you know the name of that that other organization that's going to meet with you guys to 
sort of do a study. Uh, I can find it in my... I didn't write it down and they mentioned it yesterday, but, but anyway, there's a group helping the, the PAC committee to uh, do a study to see if you know, we can make some changes and stuff like that. I would have to go back through my email. But I, I know that uh, they're meeting with a group of us that have volunteered for that on the 29th. Yes. Salem okay. Administration building. So, yeah, that concludes my report. Thank you. Um, PSBA report. Gail's not here. Anti-bullying. Gail's not here. Uh, school safety committee. Okay. Old business. Rescinding of the September 20th, 2018 resolution to remove $25,000 from the general fund. On legal advice and recommendation of the solicitor, it is recommended that be it resolved that the, res that the resolution adopted at the public meeting on September 20th, 2018, approving removal of $25,000 of revenue from the 2018-2019 general fund budget is hereby rescinded and the revenue from payments for casual dress days will be collected and deposited in the general fund of the school district. Motion. I'll make that motion. Mr. Polakowski, second. Mr. Carson. Roll call, please. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Earl? Yes. Mr. Bicestow? Yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Fry? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Motion carried seven and two absent. Information regarding rough steel building? We're working on the mold remediation and hopefully everything should be done shortly. So we're, we're, that's a continual process. New business, WIU Joint Purchasing Consortium representatives. The board will be asked to consider approval of WIU Joint Purchasing Consortium representative, James Marnell, business manager, and Charles Swink, athletic director, transportation director as alternative. Motion. Is that going to save us a lot of money? I mean, going jointly with them people. Has it in the past? Yeah. Uh, we jointly purchase uh, our paper, multi-purpose uh, paper, the paper that goes into the copiers, uh, and it's historically always been uh, less costly to jointly purchase because of the bulk than to try to purchase that on your own because you have a much smaller quantity. And of course, same thing with uh, the liquid fuels, uh, diesel and unleaded gasoline. Again, we're, as a, as a county, uh, we're, we're buying in bulk, so you're, you're apt to get a much better price uh, from uh, potential suppliers than uh, trying to buy that on your own. And of course, the, the fuel that, that is jointly purchased goes into um, the, uh, the school buses and, and school vans uh, that uh, Grooms operates for us. And there's a deduction uh, that's, that's taken off of their, bill, uh, their billing because we're, we're purchasing it, they're using it. Uh, so, yes, long story yeah, short. The only trouble is I have a problem with the gasoline thing. We're still buying from a private man for our vans and diesel fuel. It's not coming from grooms. Well, that's correct. The, the fuel that, that goes to grooms is to operate the school, school uh, minibuses and school vans that they operate transporting students. Why can't we go our vans and get that too? Or why can't we put our own fuel in? Like I asked them. I, 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 we would have to uh, increase um, our quantity requested uh, and the fuel would have to be obviously delivered to grooms and then we would have to work out an arrangement with them for our vehicles and our, and our, our tanks for getting uh, gasoline not only for our own uh, vans and maintenance vehicles but also for the, the, the gas tanks that the guys uh, take down there for you know, the tractors and lawn mowers. Um, Why can't we put our own fuel on our own site? Well, it, it would be costly. Uh, That's going to cost you, sure, the beginning, but if we did this over the years, look what we're going to save. 
I'm honestly not convinced you would save enough money over the long term to break even on not only the initial investment uh, to put in the equipment, but also the ongoing uh, maintenance for that and the extra insurance for it and of course you know, the regulations on having an outside uh, storage tank. I'm, I'm sure in the old days the district may have had underground tanks. I don't know that. I know that uh, when regulations changed in the late 1980s, a, a lot of uh, businesses, uh, small gasoline stations went out of business because of how expensive um, those underground systems became because of government regulations. And that's due to leakage that happened underground, leakage that went into, you know, groundwater systems. There so there were researchers. There I, I have not. No. Dead. I, no, I, I have not. I think Mr. or Dr. Molnar had, was heading towards that direction, but I don't think that it ever really happened. No. If, if you would like, I, I, I will look I into it. I think we ought to just look into it and see if we can't save it. You know you've got time, van, everything else involved with this. Time well, the, to go down and picking gasoline up for water. Our, our own vans and and uh, you know the mowers and that equipment, uh, they consume only about uh, ten to twelve thousand dollars per year, uh, give or take, uh, depending on the you know the fluctuation in the price. And of course, you know we, we buy it tax free. Um, so what happens is we. Uh, we, we have a, a credit card with, uh, it's called a WEX fuel card. Uh, that's the, uh, that's the, the, the credit card system that uh, Marathon uh, uses. And you know, the agreement is uh, the, uh, they deduct from the purchase price the federal and, and state taxes that are on the unleaded fuels. Uh, so we, we, we end up paying a, a net cost now, of course, the, the net cost fluctuates, uh, of course, with market conditions, but... Well, I, you know, I, I'm not trying to get off track with the, with the agenda or nothing. My big thing was, we're paying $1.67 million, I think, for transportation. And that, and I, I guess I just assumed that, that I didn't know we paid for the fuel. Well, so they're paying $1.6 million to have the buses, and then we fuel their buses, and then we do the maintenance on them as well? We oh, the no, no, they, they have all the maintenance on them. So we pay all the fuel? There's a, there, there's a, a clause in the transportation contract. There, there is a, a price set in the contract. And when, and when fuel fluctuates... But are we paying for the fuel? Here? We, we buy yes. the fuel tax-free. Yes. And then uh, they're experiencing, and they have been experiencing a deduction on their bill because there is a budgeted amount and, and I don't have the contract here, so I, I, I can't quote exact numbers. Uh, anytime uh, uh, the, the price that we pay is less than what is fixed in the contract, we deduct that from them. So uh, if the price then would go above what's in their contract, then we would pay a surplus. So in recent years, we've been experiencing a credit on their bill. So not only do we deduct the price, but we also get a, a credit because uh, we're, we're buying it less than what was uh, spec'd in, in their contract. The, the contractor, uh, you know, you could bid it one of two ways. You, you could bid it that the contractor uh, has all the risk with uh, purchasing uh, the fuel. Uh, we did that at Lincoln Air for many years. We bought it for them tax-free, and to do that, we did a $1 lease on their fuel tanks. That allows us then the right to buy the fuel tax-free. And then there's a complicated uh, reconciliation at the end of the year because you know the fuel that they buy and use that comes out of their tanks, you also have to account for the fuel that they use for non-school busing purposes. So uh, what they do is they, they had to document uh, their purchases from the market and make sure that none of our fuel was used. Uh, they had all the, the uh, responsibility for that cost. And what happened was in 2008, when the price of diesel and gasoline rocketed, uh, they were going, uh, I, I shouldn't use the term broke, but uh, they were putting out an exorbitant amount of, of dollars because of that. So then they came back to us and we had to do a contract amendment to help them out. 
because uh, what, what could happen if, if they can't afford to make payrolls and, and purchase fuel, the buses would sit and not run and your kids would not get to school. So, uh, you know, fuel has, has settled down from that nine, uh, that 2008 spike, but still, you know, there are market fluctuations. But in recent years, we've been having a credit applied to their bills. So it's worked to our advantage, but there, there has to be a price for, for them to uh, run those buses both on diesel and on gasoline. So. Mr. Corson, I am working with uh, Mr. Squink and Mrs. Geyer. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, they gave me a 27-page like document with calculations. I, I do believe, uh, even though we, we are, have a, a, such a large bill towards our transportation, we do get some of that money reimbursed, and, and I'm trying to discern that so that I can present that to the board so that we could have a comprehensive understanding of that. And, but it's a 27-page worksheet that I'm going to need help understanding with, with the calculations. Yes, on, so. on the revenue side, get uh, over a million dollars uh, in subsidy back from the Commonwealth. Now the subsidy uh, this year is based on uh, the, uh, the final uh, pupil transportation report for the prior year. So the subsidy always follows uh, uh, the year that was completed. But So you're, um, we could do a calculation on what the net cost to the district is over and above the subsidy, but Mr. Bice, also to your point, uh, in, in working with Mr. Kiefer, I know that we've uh, really been uh, researching uh, a lot of grants through the safe schools, and uh, on, above ground tanks might be something that we would have to look into as far as we're, we're looking at doing a, a school, a district uh, safety assessment, and that that could complicate matters because we, we would have to be able to ensure that 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 those tanks would be secure and that they would be free from the possibility of someone doing harm to the tanks and causing problems. So there, there, there are some other things that we would have to look into. Well, the only thing is, at one time, bottom tanks of my uh, uh, made a tank that was still outside it was cement line inside and still on the inside of that, so it wouldn't have a possibility of leaking. And then we could put uh, those road barriers around it, fence it in. I mean, it's just something to look at and see what it's going to cost, because we never did it. I mean, I know it's a big problem, but still, you're looking to save money. And I think it could make it a possibility over a period of time. It's not going to be overnight. I made a note and I will, I will okay. start exploring that. I just happen to have our, you know, our 16, 17 annual financial report. We received in subsidy $1,102,978. So when I said we receive over a million dollars, I couldn't remember exactly how much over. Um, and I don't have detailed numbers for what are budgeted for the, the current year or what, what happened uh, last year. Um, for 17, 18, and total pupil transportation cost last year, the gross was two million fifty-one thousand uh, dollars. So, a little over fifty percent uh, subsidy back. Now it's a it's an antiquated formula. So, uh, the, the the state uh, Commonwealth is, is not updating their formula, and that's been one of the long. Uh, long complaints that we've had for the years that that formula calculation is archaic and, and really not up to date with uh, you know current costs and obviously the the burdens that public school systems have you know uh, one of them that always bothered me was um, having to uh, transport uh, uh, non-public kids 10 miles beyond your school district border which uh, increase your costs. I never had a problem with transporting kids to non-public schools within your school district, but to go up beyond 10 miles, um, you have buses going in all directions. It's one thing to transport special education students, Votex students, but um, it's difficult. It's a difficult system. But, um, there Sorry is a I took you along on what I was asking, but I'll make a motion we go ahead and do this for this year. Well, this is just on our representatives, so. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'll second that. Would you mind if we uh, used an engineer to help us uh, <coughs> uh, specify the, uh, the fueling station that would be needed? Uh, you would need, a, I wouldn't recommend underground tanks, though they would be more secure. Uh, but you know, you would go with the standard above ground tanks. Now, that it's quite possibly they may need a not only a double line tank, but they might need a. a, a they they use two different blends in equipment: regular unleaded, and uh, I know they they do buy some premium unleaded for some of the equipment. Uh, you know, you would need the equipment for uh, dispensing it. Um, well, I think that before we even do that, we need to see if it's even something we're even allowed to do. Right. Like, you know, I don't know. If and you would have to budget the construction costs of it. Yeah, I think before we, yeah, I think we'll let, let's look into that. And All right, Dex, so can we have roll, roll call on the... We have the motion. Uh, yeah, Mr. Beistel made the motion and Mr. Polakowski seconded on the um, representatives. Roll call, Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. 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 Mr. Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Motion carries 7-2 The WIU 2019-2020 Joint Purchasing Program. The board will be asked to consider approving the WIU Joint Purchasing Consortium Board to advertise for the 2019-2020 bid for purchase of supplies for multi-purpose paper, and also unleaded gasoline and diesel fuel. Motion. Mr. Fry, second. Mrs. Smith, roll call please. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Fry? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. WIU 2018-2019 IDEA B and IDEA 619 subgrant agreement. The board will be asked to consider the approval of the 2018-2019 IDEA B program narrative, administrative and fiscal guidelines, and the IDEA 619 funding distribution worksheet. And basically, this is passed through money for special education. Motion. Make the motion. Mr. Polakowski, second. Second. Mr. Fry. Roll call. Mr. Carson. Yes. Mr. Fry. Yes. Mr. Polakowski. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Mr. Alt. Yes. Mr. Bice. Yes. Mrs. Love. Yes. Motion carries. Seven two absent. English learning services through the IU. Uh, this is a two-part resolution. Whereas the need for English learning services known as ELS, has arisen after the passage of the general fund budget and the current 2018-2019 general fund budget does not include the same. Be it resolved that the Board of School Directors approves transferring $17,711.80 from budgetary reserve account 10 800 into the WIU service account numbers 10 320 1080, 800, and the 10, 1100, 322, 10, 500 accounts to be available to purchase English learning services, uh, English as a second language from Westmoreland Intermediate Unit number seven. And the reason for that is that we got some students into our, we had some uh, transfers into our district students that were not English proficient. I'll make the motion. Do we only need one motion on this, or do we need two? I think there's a second part that we have to, so we need two motions, right? Okay. Um, so. With consent, you could do both. With, you could do both. We can, yeah. we can do both. So if you want, you can make a motion on both. In, a and B. A and B. In, do we need B? Uh, let me read B so okay, make sure that everyone... Uh, School board approves entering into an agreement with Westmoreland Intermediate Unit 7 for services for English learning services, English as a second language, for the remainder of the 2018-2019 school year at a cost of $17,711.80. Are you okay with that? Yes, A and B, I'll make the motion. Okay, second. 
I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, we're, we're paying this money to teach uh, non-English students English. Yes, sir. If, uh, does this cover all languages? Uh, right now, we only have uh, two students that are Spanish-speaking, so it would cover the, their services. So if, if we get another nationality, do we pay more? It could be an additional cost, yes, sir. And is that the law that we have to do that? Yes, sir. Then why do we even have to do that? <coughs> why is that the budget? Yeah, we, we have to move, we're voting to move the money, not to... I see. Well, you're moving the money in, you're entering into the agreement. Yeah. It, it was totally eliminated. The whole thing was, because he didn't have it okay. before. Yeah, we had had money uh, parked in those accounts, but we weren't expending them. So as we were going through the budget cutting process, we we looked at past history and said, well, we've not been experiencing uh, costs through the IU for ESL services, so we, we eliminated it those uh, extra monies that were uh, in there, the stuff that people would refer to as cushion. Let, let it be noted that a lot of districts are experiencing the same problem. There are a lot of people transferring into districts that are not English proficient. So, I mean, a number of districts are experiencing the same situation. Yeah, there was a lot of displacement of students due to the uh, hurricane, the, 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 the ravage ravaging the hurricane effects down in uh, Puerto Rico and in some other uh, uh, areas. So um, it's tragic for those those kids and families. Mr. Fry, did you second that? Yeah. So we really didn't make any, make any ground in the budget last year. We oh. just keep getting hit with the expenses we didn't see coming. Well, these are, these are expenses that uh, well, we have been hit with in the past, and then uh, you, know, you, you get lucky and you have some year, years where you're not hit with them, and you could either keep the money in those accounts unused, or you, in a tight budget year like we were in, you, you eliminate those, uh, the, those extra cushion funds and, and uh, hope for the best. I have, I have a couple questions. Um, do we send these students to the IU or does, does the instructor come here? The instructor comes here. We have one at the uh, at the middle school and one at the high school, so okay. services are provided. I'm just looking at this um, for the hours per week and, and things like that. Um, does somebody on our end, like I'm looking at the, the parent and staff conferences, I mean if, if the student or the parent or the student doesn't show up for the conference, um, are we going to be billed for, you know, that person? We're actually trying to uh, explore whether or not they could be done through tele teleconferencing. Okay. Yeah, I'm just looking at, like, um, that line item and, you know, progress reports, just, just things like that. I don't know if anybody's going to keep an eye on that. If, or is, is this just like the total bill, no matter? No, we're going to be monitoring the. Uh, Mr. High Two has been working okay. on. Yeah, that's. Right. Yeah, we we have to provide the family. Yes. Copies of everything in in their native language, so that that means an interpreter has to be involved in. But there there are services that are provided through the IU that can help defray some of those costs. And Mr. High Two has been working on that. Okay. Mr. Fry? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. O? I look at this as another government pushing their uh, objects, objectives toward the schools, and it burdens us even more from my like, vote is no. Mr. Bystow? Yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Motion carries six, one no, two absent. Halloween parade. The board is asked to consider granting permission to the Scottsdale Parks Commission to use the driveway at the elementary middle school complex to line up for the Halloween parade on October 31st, 2018, starting at 5 o'clock p.m. The Scottsdale Borough will provide the proper insurance papers. 
Yes. Motion, Mr. Weichstuhl, second. Mrs. Smith, roll call. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Oak? Yes. Mr. Weichstuhl? Yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Fry? Yes. Mr. Polakoski? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Motion carried, seven, two Fs. United Way, MOU. The board will be asked to consider the approval of a memorandum of understanding between United Way of Southwestern Pennsylvania and South Warner School District. Basically, they have given uh, the district, uh, two, I believe it's $2,000 for kindergarten orientation. Motion. Motion. Mr. Carson, second. Second. Mrs. Fry, or Mr. Fry, sorry. Roll call. Mr. O. Yes. Mr. Weinstein. Yes. Mr. Carson. Yes. Mr. Fry. Yes. Mr. Balakowski. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Mrs. Love. Yes. Mr. Perry, seven two. 2019 marching band trip proposal. The board will be asked to consider the approval of the 2019 marching band trip proposal to Philadelphia and Hershey, PA, from Friday. May 17, 2018 to Sunday, May 19, 2019. And I would like to add that the students would not be missing any school. I do believe that they depart at five o'clock. And I don't believe, and I do believe that they are fundraising all funds for, through their own efforts. Motion? Yes. Mr. Beistel, second. Sure. Um, is there any cost first or what do we? No, the, uh, the, it's a self-funding trip. The, the, the kids are, are fundraising their own. They're leaving, so we... No, they're not even leaving school, just so that allow the band to go. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to second them? I'm not going to second them. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious. I don't know what we were talking about that last week. Roll call. <laughs> Mr. Reistel. Yes. Mr. Carson. Yes. Mr. Fry. Yes. Mr. Palakoski. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Mr. Alt. Yes. Mrs. Love. Yes. Motion carries. Seven. Two hours. Yeah. 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 Motion to adjourn for personnel. Uh, is it adjourn or recess? Recess. Are we coming back? Yeah. Yeah. Recess. Yes. Recess. Sorry. Recess. Yeah. <laughs> Make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? All in favor. Aye. Aye. Um, opposed? Aye. Mr. Fry? <laughs> okay. I'm not That's good. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Well, I can't just, you know, ask for a motion to... <laughs> We've done that before, plan. haven't we? Make one motion. Yeah, I'll say plan. Yeah, yeah. It's called a Levi Miller special. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stipulation was that if there was a no, then we had to go to individual. <laughs> <laughs> okay, personnel, secretarial work. Plan. Plan. We already did that. Oh. Secretarial plan. The board will be asked to consider the approval of the revised secretarial plan retroactive from July 1st, 2018 to June 30th, 2021. Motion. So be it. Mr. Bice will second. Second. Mr. Fry. Roll call. Mr. Carson. Yes. Mr. Fry. Yes. Mr. Polakowski. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Mr. All. Yes. Mr. Bice Yes. Mrs. Love. Yes. Motion carries. Seven, two absent. And Mr. Carson and Mr. Fry, if you could please sign that before you leave. Thank you. Custodial resolution. Be it resolved that as settlement for a grievance, Cheryl Aller is reinstated to full-time status with benefits to her custodial position retroactive to the date of her furlough with back pay, if any. Make the motion. Mr. Polakowski, second. Second. Mrs. Smith, roll call. Mr. Fry? Yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Weistel? Yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Fry? Yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Weistel? Yes. Mr. Carson? Y
Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Motion carries 7 2 absent. Day to day substitutes? The board will be asked to consider the approval of the following day to day <coughs> substitutes for the 2018 2019 school year. Tiffany Gennard, all clearances are on file with administration and she would be sub for secretarial aid and cafeteria. And Angela Savanik, all clearances are on file with the administration and she would be sub for the school nurse. Motion? Motion. Mr. Beistel, second. Second. Mrs. Smith? Roll call, please. Mr. Polakoski? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Ald? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Fry? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mr. Carey, 72 absent. Intermittent FMLA. The board will be asked to consider an FMLA, FMLA for Heather Meyer, guidance counselor uh, for the middle school, intermittently for the remainder of the 2018-2019 school year and retain five days of sick and personal days. Motion? I'll make a motion. Mr. Polakowski, second? Second. Mr. Carson? Roll call? Mr. Smith, Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Fry? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Motion carries, seven, two absent. Resignation of classroom assistant. The board is asked to consider the resignation of Brandy Vay, autistic classroom assistant at the middle school. Last day of work was October 12th, 2018 and authorized administration to post the position. Motion. Mr. Carson, second. Second. Mr. Beistel, roll call. Yes. Mr. <laughs> Five yes. Stuff. yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Fry? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mrs. Love? With regrets, yes. Motion carries 7 2 out. Bus driver approval? The board is asked to consider the hiring of Roy Browning of Scott Del PA as a bus driver for Quest Transit. All clearances are current and on file at the administration office. Motion? Mr. Beistel, second. Second. Mrs. Smith, roll call. Mr. Yes. Beistel. Mr. Carson. Yes. Mr. Crowley. Yes. Mr. Holokoski. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Mr. Alt. Yes. Mrs. Love. Yes. Motion carries. Seven to absent. Resignation of cafeteria worker. <coughs> the board will be asked to consider the acceptance of the resignation of Judy Keppel, cafeteria worker, effective October 5th, 2018. Motion? Make the motion. Mr. Polakowski, second. Second. Mr. Beistel, roll call. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Fry? Yes. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Motion carries, seven, two opposite. Middle school head wrestling coach. The board is asked to consider the approval of Ian Malice as middle school head wrestling coach at a supplemental salary of $2,787 for the 2018-2019 school year. Motion. Mrs. Smith, second. Second. Mr. Polakowski, roll call. Mr. Fry. Yes. Mr. Polakowski. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Mr. Alt. Yes. Mr. Beistel. Yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Motion carries, seven, two absent. Middle school wrestling coach volunteer. The board will be asked to consider the approval of Zach Bixler as a volunteer middle school wrestling coach for the 2018-2019 school year. Motion? I'll make the motion. Mrs. Smith? <laughs> Second? Mr. Fry, roll call. Mr. Polakowski? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Alt? Yes. Mr. Beistel? Yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Fry? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Motion carries, 702 absent. Middle school volunteer girls basketball coach? 
the board will be asked to consider the approval of Katrina Lawfer as a volunteer middle school girls basketball coach for the 2018-2019 school year. Motion. Mr. Fry, second. Second. Mrs. Smith, roll call. Mrs. Smith. Oh, wait, Mr. Mr. Carson has some discussion. I have to deal with the wrestling coach. I'm just curious, do these, <coughs> these folks have their clearances? Yes. Yes. Do? Yes. Anything else? Yes, roll call. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Mr. Owl. Yes. Mr. Feist. Yes. Mr. Carson. Yes. Fry? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Perry, seven, two Mr. Carson, in answer to what before they're even put on the agenda, we make sure that they have all their clearances on file. Thank you. High school assistant varsity wrestling coach. The board will be asked to consider the approval of Terry Quashnock as a high school varsity wrestling coach at a stipend of $3,295 for the 2018-2019 school year. Motion. I make the motion. Mrs. Smith. Second. Second. Mr. Carson. Roll call. Mr. Alt. Yes. Mr. Beistel. Yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Fry? Yes. Mr. Polakoski? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mr. Carey, 7 2 High School Volunteer Wrestling Coach. The board will be asked to consider the approval of Caleb Porter and Mike May as a volunteer high school assistant wrestling coaches for the 2018-2019 school year. Motion. Motion. Mr. Fry? Second? Mrs. Smith. <laughs> Roll call. Mr. Baisco? Yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Mr. Fry? Yes. Mr. Polakoski? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. O? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Motion carries. Seven <coughs> Mr. Citizens' comments? Hearing none, motion to adjourn. You'll be. <laughs> Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? <laughs>